Hey everyone, Nathan Nerdock here from Nerdock E for Nerds by Nerds, and today I'm doing G G GM 911. Uh, with some of the other Nerdarchists. But before we introduce ourselves, we have Nerdarchy, the newsletter. Um, so w first, this GM911 came from the forum, but we also have Nerdarchy, the newsletter. Yeah, this is, a, this right is there. our first one from the forum. It's a, it's a historic moment in Nerdarchy history. Should we break your like your coffee thing cup over the computer? So, something, yeah. <laughs> Maiden voyage. Over, over Nate's head. <laughs> okay. Mm. And we're joined by... Dave. And I'm Ryan. Just wanted to sneak that in there. All right, so he's, it, Tom, Tom's got a problem. Uh, he, an interesting problem. He, a very, very strange, yet yeah. interesting problem. Uh, he has a nuclear physicist transported to another world. Is that what? Yeah, is to that the D and D world. Yeah, to the D and D world. And uh, he um, he eventually becomes a conjurer, and he so he's second level uh, in that in that in that school and it gives you mind a conjuration and he says well I'm a nuclear physicist I would have obviously seen a atom bomb so I can conjure up an atom bomb and what uh, a gun so I can conjure up a gun uh, but I would say that in several ways I, well first off well, I don't no, think I've ever seen the, the problem is everything that the, the, this modern character can do is game breaking potentially be game breaking yeah. you also should highlight the fact that he's a Wild magic sorcerer who's taking like dip oh, yes. two, two, magic sorcerer. two levels into I couldn't wizard, remember his original class. Wizard so do you think like this player had this whole scheme plotted out from the very beginning? Boy, <laughs> like yeah. like if I get him to say yes to this, yeah, I, I, I can push I, him to this. Dude, it's the puppy dog clothes. But yeah, he um, he totally led with like these like this story stuff, and it's kind of inconspicuous and uh, inconspicuous, yeah, inconspicuous, yeah. and then like. Then he's like, "All right, I got him. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. He's yes, ending me to that, and he's yeah. yes, ending me to that, and nuclear bomb. <laughs> yeah, I want to make a nuclear bomb. Conjure it up. Bam. So now, had um, if this GM allows this stuff to happen in this game with like handguns and, and nuclear bombs, the player one D and D is really <laughs> down to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it could be interesting. It could be fun. You could go with it. But then again, too, it, like it, it, it does kind of like ruin the fun for the other players in some ways. But then there's other. It's like letting like, somebody in your game having a dragon or something. Yeah. But let's look at it. Like, say, say he uh, summons a handgun, right? Mm. He's not proficient. Right, so no. I would just say he doesn't Correct. have proficiency because he's a nuclear physicist. This not yeah. not a military guy. Right, um, and then I would say okay, um, he pro Dex probably is not as good stat. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah, if he's if he's a wild ma uh, wild mage and sorcerer, so he's probably got charisma and intelligence. Uh, you know, are probably his good stats. So, so there's that. Then there's you know you can summon one object, right? The gun. Is an object, but the ammunition would be another. Mm. Yeah, so I, you'd have to craft the ammunition, the bullets, yeah, yeah, which you, is not easy to do when you don't have machine, you know, like machine ability of. And also, too, casings of shells. It of, probably has the loading characteristic, so it's going to take the time yeah, to load the gun. Unless right. he then makes a speed loader. I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, speed loader. If he is gadgetry, is, if he's got tinker tools and he gadgetry is a whole bunch of stuff, he makes the bullets, he makes the ammunition. Make speed loaders. It's still gonna be like okay. You, maybe it's a revolver. Mm. Yeah. Well, no. I really don't so, think you can make a sword and swing it because realistically, it's some like it's not it's not necessarily taking physical damage like a point of hit point damage, but it is being damaged when you hit it against stuff. And I feel like a gun is inherently an ex like a controlled well, explosion. Well, let's 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 so, highlight the the one saving loophole that we found for this GM we, that we found for Tom. Right. right, the the idea that for this minor conjuration ability that you get that the thing can stick around for the hour, as soon as it takes a point of damage, the thing that that you brought, as soon as it takes any damage, well, any damage, yeah, it dissipates. So, a gun takes a spark and ignition, which is probably some damage. Yeah. Uh, so no, there's gun, an explosion that happens in the chamber. Right. So the gun the bullet. One shot. The, the gun. No, you go to shoot it, and it disappears as soon as it takes the damage from the explosion. I'm less of a dick than you. I give him one bullet. <laughs> yeah. One bullet. No, it's just like it, it shoots out, and it's one of those flags that says "bang," uh, <laughs> and then it disappears. But your nuclear bomb also. Well, because if you're gonna allow the one shot of the bullet, oh, why can't that bomb just explode then? If you that combustion of the gun, like the logic loophole, if you've yeah. let that combustion of the gun happen, you let the bomb happen too. So I, I guess. Well, but because he wants to summon a nuclear bomb, 
Oh, yeah. He wants to summon a nuclear bomb as his other option. The nuclear bomb has a lot of complex parts to it. Mm. It's not just... And he would... The ammo would be real, while the gun would not be. So when you fire it, I think the gun would disappear, but the bullet would continue on with the thing. Mm. But the nuclear bomb... I mean, you've got the sections of uranium spheres smashing together at in, in incredible speeds to start the chain reaction. So that right there, I think when the uranium smashes together hard enough to bust the atoms apart and start a nuclear chain reaction, that should really be the time where it has taken damage and disappears. Mm. Uh, if But if for some reason... You or, wanna... you know, maybe it only affects like a 10-foot, you know, square. Yeah. But maybe. no, but then you could kill gods in a 10-foot square. Like, I mean, like, the thing is, if he gets this device and something, he can literally kill everything. I was... Anything with stats is dead. With a nuke can be there. Yeah, you know, it depends on how much damage you see it doing. Meteor Swarm is like... As a Meteor Swarm, you can do, what is it, like 80 die 6 or something? 40 die 6? Uh, I don't I don't know the the quant the mass amounts of damage, but meter swarm is is high up there on on spell damage. Yeah, it's like minimum forty d six. But it's like a ninth level spell. Yeah, well, that's what but, I would but, consider a nuke. Yeah, but I mean, when you're talking <laughs> so about a six level nuke. a six level character doing that, come on, like yeah. really, you're gonna give them the capacity to do that shit? Now, I would I would say possibly if you could. I mean, I didn't think about oh, I can make a bomb with this minor conjuration. Uh, I was thinking that you could do things like make a little ladder or make a foldable ladder or, you know... But you're not playing a character from make the a modern period, too. Or, yeah. So the modern the modern conjurer, I would think, should be able to summon certain things from the modern era, mm. but he's in the, the medieval world. So maybe as a kind of, like, combination, you could say, well, yeah, you can summon... How many times can he do it? Like, any every every round or something? Can he summon an animate object? I'm not sure what the duration is. Well, well you... last an hour. Okay. Um, so here's the other thing, right? There's a lot of tropes where modern stuff just doesn't work in the fantasy world or where something happens to the modern world and it, it basically goes back to the Dark Ages because um, technology ceases to work. Mm. So, like, in... You don't have to explain it. You could just say, yeah, that's weird. You, you know, it comes, but it doesn't work. Well, you, you got the thing with, like, the Dresden Files, where wizards, the way they interact all wonky with modern technology, that things that were made after a certain period, they adversely affect. So, like, you might be able to make a revolver, but you might not be able to make, like, a super more gadgety gun... Um, or you do, as soon as it happens, it could malfunction yeah, or break. It doesn't work in your hands. <laughs> Imagine building a nuke that malfunctions immediately. That yeah, might yeah. be bad. Yeah. Um, so, so there's that kind of things that you could do. Like even like uh, one of the book series Ted was reading, he was telling me about like even like uh, ke uh, chemical stuff just cease to function, mm. and, you know, which would be a, you know which would be a huge problem because really that's what you're using to for a lot of things that we use. You know, a combustion in an engine in the in the chamber of a gun. You know, a, a nuclear weapon. All of those things. You know, really would would. Um, rely on these chemical reactions that if you're saying, you know, when you part the valve between worlds, for whatever reason, you know, they don't apply here. Physics are different in this world. Well, hey, there's magic. So physics is obviously different in this world. So, yeah, yeah, you could just say that nuclear bomb just does not work the way you think it's supposed to work. So one of the other, I mean, interesting story tropes that you would have to employ when you have something like that is people are going to see him doing these wonders that they've never seen before. Well, there's going to be certain factions that are going to want to imprison him and make him make stuff for them. You know, like, it's the whole, like, Tony Stark, like, imprisoned by terrorists to make weapons type of things. Like, that shit would definitely be happening. There'd be people that would be wanting to kill him because he has a strange and unusual technology. You know, like, you, so you, there's going to be all these arcs you can do that, like, yeah, you kind of have a bounty on your head for the things that you can do. And the major thing is, once you show another wizard your trick, the wizard's seen it be conjured. He's seen the device. He's seen the object. So basically you're saying, hey, you want now to copy Now all the this conjurers sucker? have handguns? Yeah, we're like, this is awesome. Never bring <laughs> a magic <laughs> missile to a gunfight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be happening. Uh, so I would... I, you, there's a lot of restriction you can put on it. I was saying if you want to give him that feel that his character background and weird story matter... Then I would say go with his ability, like, you know, make it kind of like spell based. Like, you can throw a bomb, but it's really just a cantrip. Mm. Like, you're using your conjurer's ability to conjure a small nuclear thermal device 
but it's just... <laughs> it's I mean, a D10 or 2D10 <laughs> when you well, level. Well, I mean, you can make really tiny bombs that make really tiny explosions. Mm. I mean, they're still devastating to anybody that well, gets to catch it. You know what? That's, but... what? that's what we did in the Urban Underdark game. Carrie's character is an alchemist, mm -hmm. and her evocation spells are all explained away as chemical reactions of her mixing shit together and throwing it. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, she's just an evoker wizard, you know? Like, we just reflavored it. So, yeah, great. You're, you're, being, you're using your chemistry stuff, and that's how your spells... Because... Basically, you know, this is a guy that's just trying to take advantage of out of game knowledge and you know, like bring break the game. Break the game. Yeah, yeah, if that was his intent, I mean, that's I would say here, this is as far as you're getting. Yeah. Is you, this is the type of device you can make, and um, I also that's like I the idea of the social ramifications. Like, you're you're now you're now the most wanted man there is. Yeah, you have something realm. no one else no one else knows how to do. Yeah, and you've been showing it off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're not, if he's not careful of who sees what he's up to, yeah, like, that's definitely, you know, he could be working for the Dark Lord in the world, like, yeah. And maybe sometime down the line, like you're saying, ninth level spell, you can summon a, um, a nuclear device that can destroy part of a city. Which is just the Meteor Swarm yeah. spell. And it's, and it might be, well, yeah, it's the Meteor Swarm spell, uh, but maybe Flavor. it's turned into a ritual and, you know, you're actually creating, you're summoning different parts of nuclear uh, the nuclear bomb components and that would be really cool so it really depends on whether this guy is just trying to be ridiculous in D&D &D, or if he's like well I should be able to do something like this because of my background <laughs> if he's doing that then he'll probably really enjoy the idea of reflavoring the spells as bombs and as guns you know like a fl flame cam trip can just be turned into a ballistic force he yeah. can summon a gun and boom and it's just his attack but it looks cool yeah, it, it's basically that thing, but not when you're talking about a six-level character using a nuke. Like yeah, that's... if he wants to develop a nuclear device that can blow up a city, then yeah, just tell him you know when you're 18th level wizard. We'll see. You have that. You'll have I'm that sure you'll be able to make a spell for it. And I also like like the idea too of the fact that what you said earlier, Nate, is the more complex the object is, it actually becomes more than one object and several objects assembled to make one piece. Mm. So at that point. You know, then you have you have to abdicate how the spell actually works, and you very easily say, "Well, no, you can't actually make, you can't actually make a, a, a modern explosive because it, it's a combination of, of you know wires and gunpowder and chemicals and circuit circuit boards and batteries. You know, it's all these it's things. It's a ton of objects. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you may have seen the nuclear device, but did you see all the parts? Did right. you see the microchips? <laughs> you know, like, that perfectly time and balance everything that needs to be do you done. Know, yeah, do you actually know, can you build a nuclear device from scratch? Uh, y there are actually fairly simplistic ways to do it, but they, you know, they require things like uranium and a, like a three-story building. You know, to make it happen because it's like in the, in the anarchist cookbook tells you how to make a nuclear bomb <laughs> mm. but you know and also I think it also requires several generations of people because uh, people are going to die from the uranium poisoning and stuff mm. oh, all right. I haven't read it someone told me about it but you know, so there are definitely other factors that you can kind of throw up as obstacles in the way and or again you can just say well this in this world physics work different so I feel like this is the first video that will end up on an NSA watch list <laughs> <laughs> that discussion of uranium uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah Nerdarchy does not condone the use of nuclear weapons or NSA <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know with that I feel like there's a ton tons of uh, workarounds with this and again you have to gauge what it is your players trying to do if they're just trying to be a dick and break the game then just say no then don't and, make any concessions for them uh, yeah it, you know it, or, or come just, up with give them some alternatives or just murder their character real fast so their next character they'll, they'll come up with a background like that and you're like nah yeah. That didn't work out so well last time, and, yeah. and you can legitimately murder their character. Like the bounty's on their head because, well, or or that character gets captured and enslaved to make stuff, and now the game is because that character is captured, so he's not going to want to play that character. Mm -hmm. So he gets to play another character, and they want to rescue that character, maybe even take him out because he's making stuff for the the other side of a conflict. Yeah, but I feel like a dick character would want to try and rescue him so they could play the character again and stop, and go back to breaking the game. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but that's all right, because then you get to use well, him as a villain against well, yeah, them. Well, no. No, but you but get to tell stories about the evil well, 
this evil sorcerer that's making terrible contraptions. Depending on who you got in the party, what you do is you say, you know, like you pull them aside, say they're like like a kingsman, like very super loyal to the country. You give them a secret message to like make sure they kill that character. Yeah, you know, like look, it's like he's got to die. Yeah, and you the, get the, a few, like the rest of the party. The rescue. The rest of the party is like in on it. Like, look, this this guy, he's a danger to society. He's got to get taken out. And like, so the shock on that one player's face when like he doesn't know <laughs> that everybody else knows that like this has to happen. Especially if the, the characters kind of been like overshadowing their characters and you know can throw it in their face or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. their their payback. Yeah, exactly. They might do this with Glee. <laughs> yeah, as he so, as he cries. So Here. first and foremost, you have to discern the motive of your player and how well you know the person. And if you don't know the motive, talk with them, have mm -hmm. a conversation with the person. Yeah, because the, the reskinning and reflavoring, I think, would absolutely be the best approach of it. Not a wizard and somebody that does technology. It's somebody that does technological feats that replicate wizardry. Yeah, like makes the most sense. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. Yeah. Where kind of the mingling of magic and technology, but ultimately the effects are the same of you know a spellcaster out of the level. PHP and balanced. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think we covered it. I think we did. What do you guys think? How would you handle this in your game? Um, would you made the mistake in the beginning? <laughs> but hey, you know, I, I, you know, we appreciate the effort that goes into actually giving your players agency and let them do, letting them do something creative. The truth of the matter is, sometimes it can bite you on the ass. Sometimes. Yeah, so but let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can uh, tweet at us at, uh, at Nerdarchy on Twitter. You can also uh, read articles over nerdarchy.com. So until next, next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.